We're now nine weeks into the NFL season, and a lot has happened in this short time span. Over just a little over two months, things have changed dramatically. Teams like the Kansas City Chiefs and Philadelphia Eagles are off to hot starts, and unless something goes seriously wrong, they'll be playing in the postseason and competing for a Super Bowl title. However, not every team is having the same success as the Chiefs and Eagles. In today's video, we're going to dive into four of the most challenging situations in the NFL. We'll explore how these teams got into their tough spots, what they can do to improve, and when they might realistically become competitive again. Some of these situations are quite grim, and we'll break it all down in today's video. Spoiler alert, I know many people expected the Broncos to be on this list, but there are four other teams besides Denver in similarly tough spots. With that said, let's get started. Background music, let's kick off today's video by talking about the New England Patriots. Currently, the Patriots have a 2-7 record for the year, which might come as a surprise to some. They even have the worst record in the AFC. There are several issues plaguing this team, but the worst part is that they'd be picking fifth in the draft if it were held today. The challenge for the Patriots is that I don't believe they'll be worse than the four teams picking ahead of them. These teams, in order, are the Cardinals, Panthers, Bears, and Giants. The Panthers' pick belongs to Chicago due to the Bryce Young trade. So, while I've been vocal about the Patriots needing to make changes, it's not a typical situation. Firing a Hall of Fame head coach like Bill Bilicic isn't the same as the Broncos' decision to part ways with Nathaniel Hackett last year after a disastrous season. I still think Bill is a good head coach, especially when it comes to strategy. I'm not convinced the Patriots will end up with a higher draft pick than the four teams ahead of them. Looking at their upcoming games, they might secure wins against the Colts, Giants, and Broncos, which could give them five wins at least. This would likely put them at the sixth overall pick. However, I'm not very confident in the Patriots' ability to beat anyone at the moment. Their offensive roster is lacking, and to compete, they'll need to make significant improvements over the next few years. Their current situation is undoubtedly one of the toughest in the NFL. Next, let's talk about the Carolina Panthers, and there are several reasons why they're in a challenging spot. It's not just about Bryce Young struggling. He's a talented quarterback. The issue goes deeper than that. The Panthers traded away many assets to secure their presumed quarterback of the future, but they haven't put him in an ideal situation to thrive as an NFL quarterback. Bryce Young has started seven games and won only one. He hasn't had a single game with over 250 passing yards, with just eight passing touchdowns and seven interceptions. His passer rating stands at 77.1. The Panthers still have some tough games on their schedule, like facing the Cowboys, Jaguars, and the Buccaneers' strong defense. Rice might struggle in these games, especially against Dallas's formidable pass rush. The Panthers are in a tough situation as a franchise because they lack both draft picks and assets to help Bryce in the short term. I had hoped the Carolina Panthers would consider trading Brian Burns to acquire a first-round pick in return. Last year, there was a trade proposal that could have sent Burns to the Rams in exchange for a 2024 and 2025 first-round pick along with a second-round pick. As it stands, the Rams' 2024 first-round pick is currently the sixth overall in the draft. While it's uncertain whether Marvin Harrison Jr. would be available at that spot for the Panthers, there's a good chance that Malik Neighbors, whom I'm quite fond of, could still be on the board. When I reflect on the moves the Panthers have made, or more precisely, what they haven't done in the last 18 months to two years, I can't help but think about the challenging position they find themselves in. For instance, they traded their 2022 second round pick and two other selections to acquire Sam Darnold. There was a brief period when they could have had DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey, and George Pickens all in the same offense, which would have significantly contributed to Bryce's development. However, things didn't pan out that way. Unless they sign Brian Burns to a long-term deal and potentially include him in a trade, a situation referred to as a sign and trade, I'm genuinely concerned about Bryce's development. Currently, the Panthers have only one player with over 250 receiving yards through eight games and that's the 33-year-old Adam Phelan. Jonathan Mingo, a top 40 pick, has just 20 receptions in eight games. When you consider the Panthers could have had two first-round picks and a second-round pick from the Rams, a team that was already struggling and desperately trying to maintain their Super Bowl aspirations, combined with the fact that your number one overall picks team is struggling, this situation is far from ideal. To add to the Panthers' woes, Everywhere you look, you can't help but notice that C.J. Stroud is well on his way to winning the Rookie of the Year award, a player the team passed up on. 
The truth is, this team is at least a good two years away from being serious contenders, if not longer. Now let's turn our attention to the New York Giants. Their situation could potentially take a significant turn for the better if they end up with Drake May from North Carolina. However, for now, there are multiple reasons to be concerned about their future. One of those concerns is Daniel Jones. Even without the ACL injury, there's a sense of an ease due to the contract they handed to him. Considering the success the Giants had last year, winning a playoff game and all, it felt like a no-brainer that Daniel Jones would receive a contract extension. They had a solid head coach who made the most out of his players. The future didn't seem incredibly bright, but they appeared to have two of the most crucial positions in football secured head coach and quarterback. However, in 2023, when Daniel Jones played, he took a step back with just two touchdowns and a concerning six interceptions. Except for a second-half performance against the Cardinals, who may very well end up with the number one overall pick, the Giants have been having a very tough season. Their receiving options have been subpar, making it a big problem for Daniel, or now Tommy DeVito, to find targets. Back in July and August, during the team previews, I labeled the Giants' situation as an uphill battle in the thumbnail. This uphill battle referred to the big brothers in their division, Dallas and Philly. The comparison of the Giants' roster to those two teams was far from favorable, and that remains a significant concern three months later. This is why the Giants are featured in today's video. If we were to manage this team like a Madden franchise, with the best interests of the team in mind, it would be ideal for the Giants to lose the rest of the way and secure a top two pick. But in reality, players won't intentionally lose, nor should they risk their bodies with the sole goal of losing. This approach isn't practical, considering they might have to relocate their families at the end of the year if a tanking strategy were to succeed. I genuinely believe in Brian Dabble as the head coach and think he can lead the Giants for a long time if he's allowed to get his quarterback of the future. However, the business side of the NFL complicates matters. Money often talks, and the Giants might prioritize Daniel Jones over Dabble if push comes to shove. Daniel Jones is likely to get a more extended leash as a quarterback than Dabble will as a head coach. From a competitive standpoint, the Giants desperately need a quarterback for the future. If they can secure Drake May from North Carolina along with some better offensive weapons, they might be competitive enough to challenge the Philadelphia Eagles and Dallas Cowboys midway through the 2025 season. At present, their roster is far from competitive, and their 2023 season has been nothing short of a nightmare. From a humiliating 40-0 loss to Evan Neal's burger flipping comments, to their starting quarterback being sidelined for the year, the Giants are going through a challenging phase as an NFL franchise. We're witnessing some tough times for the New York Giants. Next up, we have a team that's technically still in the playoff race, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We talked about them a few weeks ago, and when they started the season 3-1, I didn't see them as Super Bowl contenders, but rather a team that could reach 9 or 10 wins and maybe even win their division. The NFC South isn't known for its strong competition, and if the Buccaneers could avoid losing games against teams like the Falcons, Panthers, the Young Packers, or the Colts, they could accumulate quite a few wins. My expectations weren't that they'd be a dominant force, but more a result of a favorable schedule. In two of their recent games, they lost to the Falcons and the Texans, two matchups I believe Tampa could win. Unfortunately, in both of these games, they allowed over 400 yards of offense and looked far from their best. Especially in the game against the Texans, C.J. Stroud showed his potential, making a case for the Rookie of the Year award. Sometimes, in life and in the NFL, you realize that it's time to rebuild. Not to get too philosophical, but now is the time for the Buccaneers to rebuild, not two years later after they potentially wasted the prime years of Mike Evans. The Panthers are going through a similar phase. The Saints may not be true Super Bowl contenders with Derek Carr as their quarterback, and the Falcons have their own problems. Arthur Smith, their head coach, is sometimes reluctant to involve their top 10 draft picks, adding to their challenges. The Buccaneers must ask themselves if they want to settle for 8 or 9 wins every year or if they want to take a year to truly rebuild, maybe even with just 4 wins, and look for a quarterback and head coach for the future. I don't believe Baker Mayfield is the long-term solution, despite playing well in 2023. Now is the time to rebuild for an organization that went over a decade without a playoff appearance. It doesn't have to be that long again, but the Buccaneers need to seize this opportunity while they can. In this unique division, there's no clear team of the future, unlike other divisions in the league. Unfortunately, I'm concerned that Tampa might miss this opportunity, and that's why they're featured in today's video. 
I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Only about 27% of people watching are subscribed and your subscription means a lot. Until next time, stay safe and have a great day. Thank you for your support.